Today I'm going to show you how to paint my favourite animal, which is an elephant. To make the job easier, I have um, a drawing that I did earlier. Um, I want you to do a drawing first, if you want to follow me, and then mix up pale blue uh, using cobalt blue. And I'm, in this time, I'm using a rigger brush. And I would just paint gently over the line. Now, just to show you how it starts. Okay. I'm going to stop it there and move it to one side because I actually prepared one earlier. So here I have the elephant, still with some of the pencil underneath and the blue line, which is now quite dry. And I've put in the three primary colors, aureole in yellow, permanent rose, and cobalt blue. I've mixed together aureole in yellow and the permanent rose and made orange. And then I've mixed permanent rose and cobalt blue and made violet. Now, just because all those three colors are transparent, they don't have a lot of dark punch. So I've added a darker color, and that is burnt umber. And when mixed with the violet, it gives a lovely shade. So I'm just going to now make a start on the next stage. Clean it up properly. Dust it off. Don't use your hand. If you use your hand, you transfer grease from your hand onto your painting. And then here, I've mixed orange. And I'm going to just place in the orange on the elephant. If you give yellow and pink, or red if you like, and blue to a child, you're going to get elephant grey. But I don't want to do it like that. I'm not going to mix all three colours together. What I'm going to do is layer the colours. I'm just going to put a little bit more red into there. It's coming out a bit yellowy. It's better. Oh, bit too sharp. Permanent rose is extremely strong. You only need a little bit of it. It's a great colour. Just put a little bit more yellow into the mix. You'll notice I'm leaving gaps. Those gaps will create a third colour when I put a second layer over the top. It's, it's almost like a highlight. Today I'm working on um, a rag paper, Arsh rag paper. A rag paper will show the layers better than a, a cellulose paper, which is a normal paper that most watercolorists use. I know the rag paper is more expensive, but it does give you greater definition. For something special, it's worth getting to know as a product. I think I just need a little touch more on here. And then I've got to let this dry. I'm just going to go back again into the land behind and maybe make it a bit pinker. Just change the colour slightly. Now that didn't take long. Easy. Anybody can do that. Not difficult at all. Just need to let it dry. The painting's dry now. I'm ready for the next stage. This is a particularly favourite elephant of mine. She's called Echo. She's been the most filmed elephant that ever was. She died, I think it was last year, and she'd reached the ripe old age of 65. I've got some violet paint now, mixed with the pink and the blue, and I'm going to take it over the top of the orange. Watch carefully. This is really amazing, because I'm actually going to turn Look at that lovely shade of grey. It's going over the white, over some of the white. I'll, I think I'll leave a few flecks of white showing. Just a few. So we're now getting an orangey grey, some violet, where I'm passing over the white area. There's a lot of red earth in Africa, and the elephants are always wallowing in it, blowing it over themselves, using it as um, an insect repellent, and also a coolant, I think. Just go under the feet, and not to forget the toenails. Have you ever seen toes on an elephant? Did you know the toes are inside the foot? With just the toenails peeping out. Echo was beautiful. She had her tusks crossed at the front, and she was the most marvellous matriarch. One of her daughters will have taken over the role. Not necessarily, and I don't think it was actually her next in line. She chose 
the one that she thought was the most suitable to be the matriarch and coached her on. Look how the tusks show. This isn't quite the final stage. As I said before, I'm working with transparent colours and none of them are really quite dark enough to give me the darks that I'll need, even if they were mixed intensely together. I've had so much fun sketching elephants from the back of a Land Rover. That really is my favourite way of painting. Well, sketching. And then turning it into paintings afterwards. Just a little bit of the violet into the background because it'll push it backwards. I'm afraid we're going to have to let it dry again. But that was easy. I do hope you're going to have a go at this. See you in a minute. I'm just going to mix an extra dark bit of grey violet. I'm going to put in burnt umber with the violet and I'm going to use a smaller brush. So red and blue, quite a dark violet, and then put burnt umber into it. Surprisingly, burnt umber always makes the colour look warmer and it becomes necessary to add more blue than you would think you would need. Well, here goes. Let's see if I've mixed the right colour. I think I'll put a little in the eye first. This lovely dark bit under the under the tummy. Because the paint's transparent, the drawn line has become part of the painting, and that's the joy of painting uh, brush drawing in the first place. It's something that, if you've not tried, it's well worth trying. I'm just going to put a few over the drawing, a few darker lines on the Hoover tube and on the creases folds in the flesh. There are folds at the side of an elephant's ear. Just a nice touch to put a few in. Not far off actually. But nearly there. That was easy. I do hope you'll have a go. I can't emphasize enough how important it is to do a little bit of brush drawing and let it become part of the painting. And also seeing how you are colour mixing by layering the colours, only using three primary colours plus a touch of a fourth. That's it for now. I hope you've enjoyed it and I hope to see you again soon. Bye.